When your mental health has hit rock bottom, hospital should be a place of safety. Lots of men flooded in the room, floored them and pinned them down. He thought that he was going to be raped. Somewhere to be treated with care and compassion. He lifted his hand and slapped me really hard on my thigh. It's assault. But we've heard a very different story about one mental health hospital. I couldn't walk for a week, the week after, because the amount of pressure they put on my hip. Nurses were pushing David down on the bed, and this gentleman was saying, you psychotic bastard. A toxic culture where illegal drugs are rife. Were you offered them? Yeah, everyone was offered them. Experts say what patients describe would be abuse. What really concerns me, if it persisted, this unit, it would represent a continuing scandal in mental health care. So should it be closed down? I think it should be closed down. Adele Douglas is from Forfer and is a youth worker. Like a growing number of young people, she has mental health issues. Last year, she was in a dark place, wrangling with depression and anorexia. It's like you're not in the world, you know, you're just sitting in a bubble and there's nothing around you. You don't know how to get yourself out of this dark area area that you're in and maybe sometimes you get a bit too proud and you don't want to ask for help but got to the point where I had to. Adele was admitted to an NHS psychiatric hospital in Dundee. It's called Carsview. As a patient there, Adele was determined to kill herself. Staff needed to watch her 24 hours a day to prevent her from taking her own life. I was on constant observation, so a nurse was sitting outside my room and uh, I had my mattress on the floor, all my um, sheets were everywhere, my clothes were thrown about, my curtains were shut. Um, and I think I remember somehow getting my sheet into my bathroom um, and I think it got to the point where I was so anxious and I was so like I don't want to be here anymore kind of thing. That day Adele made a serious attempt at suicide. Staff came rushing in and she says they got her to the ground. I was face down, my hand was like this up behind my back um, both hands, um, my head was held down. It had to be held down to the ground because I was physically smashing my head off the ground. I don't know what I was trying to do, maybe knock myself unconscious or something, I, I don't know. It can't be easy for staff when someone is determined to harm themselves. Physically restraining a patient is allowed when it's necessary. And in Adele's case, there's no doubt they had to intervene. But she says this didn't feel like care. It felt like assault. My legs were held, but my knee was in a funny position. It's like he was hitting my knee to the floor. And I kept shouting at him, you're hurting my knee. I've had an operation on my knee. Like, you're hurting it. Stop leaning on it so hard. And um, at this point, I was going absolutely mad. And then he'd lifted his hand and slapped me really hard on my thigh. And um, after that, when he slapped me, he said, that's enough of that. The guy was really rough with me. It's like he was taking his frustration out on me. This is the bruising and swelling Adele says was caused to her knee by the way she was held down. I said, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. 
and they've said, well, stop uh, moving, stop struggling, stop this, stop that. And I'm like, well, stop the men yanking my legs, you know, slapping me, pull me about the place. You just stop that and I'll calm down. She said a nurse later told her how long she'd been held down for. I was there for about 45 minutes to an hour. And, I, and it was to the point where they were doing my obs, blood pressure, everything, on the floor. And I was down for a long time. Adele says some of the staff were very professional, but she was pinned down in this way three times. So what are the rules about how to restrain a patient? NHS Tayside follows a range of guidelines on restraint, including those by the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence, or NICE. They recommend face-down restraint should last no longer than 10 minutes. And the Mental Welfare Commission also says restraint should only be used as a last resort. I want to show our evidence to someone completely independent of Carr's view. Professor Tyrer chaired the group which wrote the NICE guidelines. Like he was taking his frustration out on me. Adele is a young woman with asthma. Should they be restraining her in the way she describes? I couldn't understand why, in fact, there's any reason at all to keep that person, that poor girl, in a position where, in fact, it's highly dangerous. I mean, you've notice that she has problems with asthma. The major problem with holding people face down is that they can actually die from respiratory obstruction. Asthma is a cause, you know, severe asthma. People die from that when their airways are obstructed. So it's actually very dangerous for her to be dealt with in that sort of way for that length of time. And uh, I can't understand why that wasn't appreciated. Carsview is the biggest mental health unit in Tayside, with around 80 beds over five wards. Hundreds of patients a year are treated there, but we've discovered Adele's experience is one of many. During this investigation, we've spoken to 23 people who've been patients at Carsview over the past five years. Each one of them went there for treatment to be looked after, yet they say in some ways it made them worse. There was one woman with learning difficulties. They would say, get back to your room or you'll get the needle. They would just stay and sedate her. It is punishment. Frightening. All the patients were on edge, scared. A patient was restrained for spitting his tea back into his mug. A member of staff called him a dirty pig and lifted him out of his chair, dragging him to his room. These allegations are of restraint mostly happening behind closed doors, often in the rooms of patients who are mentally unwell. Lorraine Dunsmuir's son Christopher was admitted to Carsview last year with delusions, believing he was God. She says he was never violent. We weren't worried that he would harm himself or anyone else. It was the delusional, the grandiose delusions that Christopher was displaying that were alarming us that made us take him to the doctor in the first place. Not any threats of uh, violence or threatening, to, threatening behaviour to anyone else. Christopher was deliriously happy in his illness. Christopher told his mum he became confused and agitated soon after he was admitted and tried to get out. He was taken back to his room and tried to stop staff from coming in. Guidelines on restraint are clear, that before restraint is considered, staff should talk to the patient to try to calm them down. But Christopher says this wasn't done. He said to me, Mum, just as I was going away to my bed, the door opened and they all came flooding in. <laughs> Obviously, Christopher's got a bit of a fright. Then they've grappled with him. Christopher says to me that he was horrified, terrified, never knew what was going on, felt that he was away to be murdered. They then floored him and pinned him down. He says that they were very heavy handed. Christopher says he was held face down by at least six staff. He says there were staff on his arms, his legs, his back, his head. They then 
started trying to take his trousers down. He thought that he was going to be raped. He said that he had never felt so horrible and lost in his entire life. He was injected with a tranquilizer on his bottom. Was he left in any pain? Yes, he had bruises. He had bruises up his arms and his legs. He also had bruising across his chest and was complaining of severe pain quite a few days afterwards. The guidelines are there for good reason, but not every situation on the wards is predictable. So I'm in Manchester to meet an expert in best practice. I ask her how much force is too much. Restraint is used in emergency situations and is used as a last resort in order to try and um, prevent a, a person from becoming more upset, agitated or violent. I mean, these are patients, these are individuals with mental health problems and it's felt it's totally inappropriate to, in this day and age to be inflicting pain on vulnerable individuals. Carr's view is meant to be a safe, compassionate police. Are the staff providing that place of safety? This young woman has told us she struggled with her mental health since she was raped when she was 17. It was after the abuse happened. I just started falling right downhill. I wasn't being picked up because I wouldn't tell anybody. And I dealt with it myself for quite a few months. Well, years, I would say I dealt with it myself. And then I just went completely into complete crisis. At her lowest point, she tried to kill herself. She doesn't want to be recognisable to those who don't know her, so chooses not to show her face on camera. She only left Cars View a couple of months ago. She says one staff member really helped her through it, but others made her much worse. At home, her mum felt helpless as she read her daughter's texts from the ward. Did you ever feel like you might lose her? Yes. Yes, that was a constant thought. You were constantly worried about her? She was just blank, she wasn't even talking, just, you would just sit in the dining room, she'd be sitting colouring in, there was no communication. Raquel hoped her daughter would be treated with compassion. Given that she was a rape victim, her mum was astounded to hear her daughter say she'd been pinned face down five or six times by staff. When you say they restrained you, what do you mean? They kind of grab you and they throw you to the floor. Somebody actually sat on me on my back. Somebody sat on your back? Yeah. I couldn't barely get my head up because I was right to the ground. And I asked them to relieve the pressure and it says that until I started fighting them, they won't relieve the pressure. And were you, when you say you were fighting them, do you mean struggling or was there any kind of aggression? I was struggling to get them to get the pressure off me because the pressure they were putting on me was seriously hurting my joints because I have rheumatoid arthritis. She says the memories of the rape came flooding back. It kind of brought me back to that time when it happened, when I was 17. I've been forced into the floor and not been able to move. Like you're paralysed because you can't, physically can't move. So it did bring quite a lot of trauma and being restrained so many times. Are there particular concerns with people who have experienced rape or sexual assault in the past? Yes, definitely, because of course, this is precisely the sort of circumstance that she must have been through in the past. And of course, it's hardly surprising that this is rekindled by having that sort of uh, um, violence perpetrated in hospital. And of course, in those circumstances, you should be doing everything possible to avoid any form of violence like that. And uh, it doesn't look as though that was even contemplated. It's interesting you call it violence. Yes, it is violence. I mean, we call it restraint and we call it uh, 
um, control, but these are euphemisms for violence. The people we've met so far have been recent patients. But we've uncovered evidence that this culture stretches back at least five years. This photo is from 2013. David Fong says this was a result of being restrained in Cars View. While I was pinned down by, again, about five, six people, um, one of the nurses put his hand on the back of my head and um, just ground my face into the carpet um, on the floor. Um, that took uh, the skin off my face, like um, side of the forehead and down the side of my face. David is settled now, but five years ago, it was very different. He spent a month in Carsview with psychosis. It was a month, he says, had a lasting impact. You're hardened by the events that happen to you in life. You're not scared. You've had, like, the, the worst happen to you um, that you can imagine. David claims staff used restraint violently and repeatedly over his time there and complained about it. What this tells us is that NHS Tayside have known about allegations of abusive restraint for five years. His mum says she witnessed it too. Because he kept saying, Mum, just take me home, this gentleman cut the visit short. And I was sort of escorted one way and David was escorted the other way. I went to where David's bedroom was, outside in the car park. I went to David's room, outside David's room, and the nurses were pushing David down on the bed and this gentleman was saying, you psychotic bastard, and just pushing David down and thing. And all the things that he was saying was Evil psychotic wrong. maniac. Even, uh, uh, yeah, um, but there was about four or five people down on the Thing. And I just said, you stop that, uh, saying that to my son and you leave my son alone. David had been in another hospital where he felt he was treated with respect. Although staff had used restraint techniques there, he said what happened in Cars View felt quite different. The restraints in Cars View definitely did feel like punishments. The nurses wanted to maintain their authority above patients. Um, so maybe they were trying to maintain this air of power um, that they could maybe keep, keep, keep um, people in control. When you look at those, what's your first impression? Pretty shocking, actually. Burn marks such as that have clearly arisen from friction. Rubbing of the face into a carpet is, is certainly not uh, an acceptable approach and would never be taught as part of um, prevention and management of violence and aggression. Whenever a restraint does happen, it's meant to be recorded. But I found something else. The NHS figures for Cars View don't seem to add up. It's something I need to check with David Fong. Let me show you this. This is information that has been posted by NHS Tayside themselves. It comes to the year where you were in Cars View. Here's yeah. Cars View. It says that there were fewer than five incidents of restraint yes. in that entire year for all, all patients, patients. Okay. in Cars View. How come when you're in my records... notes, we have hard written evidence that there is at least uh, well five restraint happened to just me alone. Right, and you believe it's more than that. Yes. So how do you react to their claim? It's disgraceful. Obviously, there's been things going on that haven't been recorded. People that have been doing these incidents or carrying out these incidents have basically been, if they're saying less than five, have been covering up what's really been going on. In fact, David's NHS medical notes record six restraint incidents in one month. Yet this isn't reflected in official figures. If Cars View is not handling difficult situations correctly, then is there a different way? A hospital in Liverpool has won awards for the way they're trying to avoid restraint wherever possible. I want to know how they do it, and I'm hoping they'll give me an idea of the best way to hold patients face down for their own safety. But I'm in for a surprise. 
any form of restraints is dangerous, but particularly face down restraints. It turns out they don't train their staff to use face down restraint because it is so potentially harmful. We no longer train staff in the deliberate use of face down restraints. But what we acknowledge is that you may end up in that position. So what we do train our staff in is the safe management of it. But if I was really, really resisting... We would try to avoid face down restraints at all costs. Even these hands-on techniques are a last resort. What we would be thinking about is reassurance and support. Just let me go in. Move out my way. You're in my way. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I don't, get no, I don't, I don't want to get in your way at all. I'm sorry. This nurse is showing us how to do exactly that before the situation gets too far. It must be terrible to feel stuck in here. It is. I, re I really understand it's horrible. that. You just put he is demonstrating with a patient who works with the team here to reduce restraint. Going to inject me next, are you, on the floor? Oh, yeah. It takes time, but the way the nurse talks to a patient is the key to this hospital's No Force First programme. Are you OK for me to stick around for a bit? We've managed to reduce physical restraint on our wards um, and also assaults on staff by about a third over the last couple of years. So it shows that actually this is a much safer approach because they've not been experienced the re-trauma of having been restrained, um, but it's also safer for staff. It sounds like Mersey Care Trust is trying to develop a culture which puts compassion at its heart. It's very different to what we've been told about the culture at Cars View. Over the past 18 months, around two dozen people have spoken to us with concerns about restraint, about staff apathy and bullying. There is this one nurse who wields the needle of power. He holds that over us to behave and do what we're told or get jagged. The staff were using patients for their own entertainment. The staff are on their phones laughing and joking in the nurse's station all the time. It's like the patients are an inconvenience. I got better support from the cleaners who'd at least talk to you than some of the staff. Carsview is meant to be a hospital to help heal the mind away from the difficulties of life outside. But as well as those incidents of restraint we've heard about, the alleged bullying, the apathy of some of the staff, there's another big problem. Many of the patients we've spoken to have said illegal drugs were rife inside the hospital. No. This college lecturer from Dundee turned to Carsview for help when everything got too much for her. I've had mental health issues diagnosed from about 15. Um, it's always been cycles of a couple of years, everything's good, and then it'll be a couple of years, everything's really, really bad. Um, got more serious after a serious assault when I was 21. Yeah, wrote a diary. Marnie Sterling had two stays in Carsview with anxiety and depression. She couldn't believe what it was like. Did you see illegal drugs on the ward? Yeah, all the time. It was rife. Um, cannabis was the easiest one to get. Uh, speed was quite common. Valium. And were you offered them? Yeah, everyone was offered them. And did you ever take them? No. So were they selling them to patients? Yeah. And this is patients selling them to patients? Yeah. Within the actual ward? Yeah. It was really obvious that people were getting high. And Marnie's not the only one who says she's seen this. Did you witness any illegal drugs on the wards? Yes. A lot. Mm -hmm. A lot. Um, especially two patients um, constantly dealing, um, handing out. Some of them were prescription medication. There was weed um, or cannabis. Um, and I know two people that were taking coke as well. So they were actually taking them on the ward? Yes, they were. How did that affect your recovery? I was scared, you know, because you don't know how people are, are on when they're on drugs. I don't know, I felt a bit threatened. It's just I don't want to get involved in that. There are patients selling drugs yes. in Carsview. Yes, yes, yes. A unit which has that degree of 
drug use going on between patients in a ward is a hospital that's out of control. Quite apart from anything else, if you're taking prescribed drugs and the people you're seeing are taking illegal drugs, there's a real danger because of interactions between them. And so you can actually have all sorts of problems of people thinking that they're giving too high a dose when in fact they're not giving too high a dose because they're, they're already taking an illegal drug. So in fact, you're dealing with a dangerous situation. So there are allegations of illegal drug taking, bullying and abusive restraint. If this is the case, how can all this have been going on over at least five years in an NHS hospital? The Mental Welfare Commission monitors psychiatric hospitals. They recently visited Cars View, but didn't hear the allegations we've heard from patients. We told them what we found. They say they're concerned and will follow up as necessary. The restraint experts we spoke to haven't been inside Cars View. We wanted their independent view of what's been described to us. This very much seems reflective of a, an institution in crisis uh, that needs to look at the culture um, and address the fact that force um, appears to be getting overused. If you were giving them marks for good practice, what mark would you give them? That's a difficult one, really. If you were saying um, poor, good, excellent, very good or whatever, I mean, I, I would certainly put this at the poor end, um, if, if not even abusive. Professor Tyrer goes further. Abuse is a slightly overused term, but I think, I think it's justified. What really concerns me, if it persisted, this unit, it would represent a continuing scandal in mental health care. So should it be closed down? I think it should be closed down. We asked NHS Teesside if Carsview should be shut down. They didn't answer that or any of the detailed points we put to them. They said they cannot discuss individual cases due to patient confidentiality and would not be interviewed. NHS Tayside say they are concerned by the nature of the allegations and would like to include them in an independent inquiry into mental health services in Tayside that's already ongoing. The patients we've spoken to say the experience of Carr's view stays with them. I would definitely call it a crime. They were doing things that shouldn't be done. They were doing things that if it happened out with in society, then it would have been classed as assault. Um, so definitely 100% I would class them as crimes. The only thing Carsview is good for is medicating people. There's no care in any other way. I think I'm going to cry because I just get so upset about it. I wish I could go to some of them face to face and say, you haven't beat me, you know, I'm, I'm still here. I would say that he came out not high anymore with the psychosis, but more that he's damaged. Christopher's damaged and I don't think it was with his illness. I think Christopher is now damaged by his experience in Carthew. Details of organisations that can offer information or advice about mental health issues are available at bbc.co.uk forward slash action line or you can call for free at any time to hear recorded information on 08000 155 998.